Yo guys, what is going on? This is Cardinal Bird 5. Today I have a special gameplay for you guys showcasing the new Matt Harvey. We're going to actually have two gameplays for you guys. And again, this is on Teeps' account, so he's pretty much got every card. We're going to have a good lineup, so I like our chances, and plus I want to show you guys this new Harvey card. So yeah, starting out this game, uh, this first opponent, he wasn't too bad. We were playing at AT&T, and you can see I can get some uh, quick and easy outs with Harvey. Now I will say Harvey, if I was to compare him to one pitcher as he gets to hit Ted Williams there, I would compare him to somewhat like a Steven Strasburg with a little bit harder slider and a little bit better slider overall. Um, he can throw up to 98, 99. I never did get triple digits with him, but if you play at Coors or somewhere, you could probably hit 100 because of the elevation. But he's definitely very valuable, mainly because of his fastball. His per nines, I believe, are good enough. I think they're at 79 and 80 as we line out there. So his per nines to me are good enough. Strasburg's are obviously a little bit better. Um, so going into this game, my goal was to dominate with the fastball. Now, these t my two different opponents here, uh, in this first gameplay, you can see they're a little bit different, or you will see later on that they're a little bit different. And uh, I'll show you guys why, and why Harvey will work against certain players, and why he won't work against other players. Ironically, uh, well, you guys will just see how the games play out. So anyways, I want to talk, talk a little bit about the MLB The Show lately. I feel like lately, I am lining out like crazy. I've even been playing a little bit of Battle Royale. As my opponent gets a couple on here, and you guys see that nasty slider, that's one of his best pitches. But I feel like lately, I am getting a ton of green swings and just either lining out or getting the weirdest contact where I just pop up. And it has been very frustrating as of late. Um, so I'm not sure what's going on. I really don't. I think I think I just uh, ain't been playing too much. I don't know. I, I really don't know. Like I've been playing a lot, but it's off and on. Like I'll not play for three or four days, and then play for three or four days, etc. Uh, I also got a new gaming chair, which sets up a little bit higher, so I kind of had to readjust my monitor. And a little bit things like that can definitely affect your hitting. And I, I believe this was the first game online. I got my new gaming chair. It's setting up a little bit higher, so I had to readjust my monitor a little bit. So my eye level is a little bit different. And little things like that are huge. So, yeah, if you guys get new chairs or a new setup, make sure you're comfortable and you get a lot of BP in and your eye level is even with the pitcher. Uh, at least the pitcher's like release point or ball cap, what I like to do. So, not to make all these kind of excuses, but I believe that is one reason I started off a little bit cold. As Beltron rips one into the gap, and as you guys can see here, he messes up. And look at this speed. I mean, that, you got to be aggressive on the base path. You always got to be rounding the bag. Uh, make sure you preload the button to where you round the bag. And then you can always go back if they filled it cleanly, but you always want to make sure you, you preload it to round it. Uh, so we do get one run there, basically because of uh, our speed. Strike out each row. We hung a slider here to Altuve and got away with it. So, the good thing about my opponent's lineup is he had a couple righties where I could actually utilize his curveball and slider. Now, I would never use Harvey's curveball, like hardly, hardly ever use his curveball against lefties. It's just it's just too much of a risk. When you hang one pitch, I can cost you a few runs. Uh, I would suggest against lefties, guys, you mainly want to stick with fastball, slider, and changeup. You really don't even want to throw his two-seamer too much, and that's, an, that's another reason why I like facing more balanced lineups with Harvey and not necessarily all lefties. Um, as Harvey does get a strikeout there. Now, my opponent did strike out quite a few times against Harvey. So, for this game, I think Harvey did a pretty good job. Uh, we do, we are up one nothing early on, so that's nice. And again, I don't know if I was just taking this opponent too lightly or whatever. I mean, I just, he started Gaylord Perry for crying out loud, and I just, I did not have great contact. I didn't strike out, I just didn't score a lot of runs. So, I really needed Harvey to, you know, to dig in here and keep me into the game. And I was also trying to leave Harvey in there for a little bit longer. Um, than usual. That was my goal going into the game. Was like I'm trying to get a gameplay for Harvey for you guys to show him. I don't want to take him out in the third or fourth inning if my opponent gets a few people on because I, I tend to do that, especially if I know my opponents are really good. But no, I left Harvey in as long as I could this game. As again, that's what I'm talking about. Tons of lineouts lately, especially with uh, Joe Maurer and Pujols. Just tons and tons of them. And then this is another perfect example. I felt like I was all over this pitch and it just dies. I don't know if it's because we're playing AT&T or if the wind was blowing in. I don't know. It was just a weird, a weird game. And like you guys can see here, he's hanging a lot of pitches. He's pitching parry, and I'm making good wood on it. I mean, it's just, I can't find a hole. Also, I wanted to talk about this opponent. 
He had all of his players playing out of position, and I'm hitting 100 mile an hour ground balls. By the way, Arod makes an outstanding play here to get Filler out. Filler super slow, so pretty good play nonetheless. But my opponent had all of his players out of position. He had Belcher at short, he had Altuve at third, and Corey Seager at second. Why I do not know, but they were fielding balls like crazy. Uh, I think Altuve only had one error. Yet, you know, some of my infielders, you guys will see later on in the game, um, they didn't make all the plays. So that really kind of pissed me off. And uh, I think they need to fix this for next year. Like, you should not be allowed to start players out of position. All right, if you want to sub them in late in the game because you have no other option out of position, that's fine. But you should not be allowed to start guys out of position. It just drives me nuts. And it really didn't even give this guy an advantage because those guys all would have been in his lineup anyways. But I know a lot of people do that when put, like, Stalker at first or whatever. It just, it just drives me nuts. <sighs> but it is what it is. I mean, you are taking a downgrade in fielding. I just don't feel like it is strong enough at times. And there's another good example. Like, this ball, I felt like I stayed on it. And my created player, well, keeps created player, just, it's just like a weak fly out to center. I didn't really know what's going on. But you can see Harvey is pretty much dominating. And look at this guy. He tries to freaking cheese bunt when I have the shift on. That really takes me off, too. I have the second baseman playing in, and they still try to drag bunt. And then we throw a pitch down into Ted Williams, and he just doesn't have the bat speed to hit that. So like I said, Matt Harvey, pretty much fastball slider. I didn't even like throwing the changeup too much against lefties because I felt like if you hang it, it was gone. Uh, Beltre does take me deep there. I hung a, I wouldn't even say I hung a slider. It was down and away. Uh, that's another kind of weird thing about this game. That slider was down and away, and uh, he was able to pull it for a freaking bomb. So it's just little inconsistent things like that that kind of just drove me wild this game. And it was my first game back in a while. And playing in my new chair. Just stuff like that. Like getting these green swings. Um, I know I wasn't exactly, I wouldn't call that like a true center green, but you're hanging pitches to great hitters. And if you're especially hanging them, I understand if they're high in the zone or low in the zone. But if you're almost pitching these pitches, you know, on the fat part of the plate, down the middle, somewhere relatively close to that, and you hang pitches, I feel like you, they should pay more in this game. Uh, so anyways, Harvey is cruising. So far, seven innings, one or run, as we do get a single there. And that was Reggie Stalker, and we're trying to get some more runs on the board here. And that's in a perfect example. A-Rod, the pitch is down the middle, and it's just a fly out to center. It's down the middle, and I don't feel like my timing was that bad. Uh, maybe it was, maybe I could have pulled it. But I really wish I could show you guys this entire game in the next game, but unfortunately I have to cut it out. Like, that's a hanging splitter right down the middle. And I realize I'm under it a little bit. Um, it also makes it look a little bit worse because I used the wedge interface and not the uh, outline. But that should have been crushed. And we stranded so many runners. We stranded two more runners there. But hey, we're cruising. We got Matt Harvey going in the eighth. Uh, we got a 2 2 count. Missed a fastball there. 3 2 count now. And we throw a fastball in the inner half. All right, so we're going to get our first out here, right? No. Reggie Stalker just freaking drops it. And Reggie Stalker's not even a bad fielder. He has like 80-something fielding, and he just drops it. Uh, we strike out Ichiro, the next batter. Then Altuve comes up, and watch this. Fastball in the inner half. This guy has not been pulling it all game. Somehow hits a home run. I mean, Harvey's two-seamer was eating this guy's right. He's just eating him up, and all of a sudden he just hits a bomb. And I'm down 3-2 to two and about to lose this game. Uh, definitely one of the most strangest games I've ever played. So that was Harvey's debut. I really didn't think uh, he pitched bad at all. He gave up three runs, and I think... Technically, it was like seven and two-thirds, but he had, I think, nine or ten strikeouts, and we're going to fast forward to the bottom of the ninth. We got two outs. He's got Andrew Miller, and I can barely see the ball at this point. Subbed in Johnny Bench. He got a base hit for me to keep me alive. And that's another annoying thing. My opponent played in the day game, so I can't even see the pitch high in. Somehow, I hit it there with uh, Ted Williams. So, we do have two on, two out in the bottom of the ninth. Can we get a clutch, here, clutch hit here with uh, Beltron? Work it to a full count. He brought in the new Soria flashback, and again, I can barely see the ball, but I'm trying to stay alive. I'm trying to look for a cutter or something over the plate so we can drive it. And he throws me a curveball. Again, I had a tough time picking it up. I thought I checked my swing. Um, and that's another thing that kind of ticks me off about this game, is like the check swings are completely random. It's not based off how much pressure you put on the button like it was on last gen. That's something else that annoys me. Uh, yeah, but this guy... I don't know, it is what it is. That was actually my first loss on Teeps' account, so we're going to move on to the second game. I think I had like 50 or 45 straight wins on Teeps' account, and then I lose to a guy. In my opinion, I shouldn't have lost to him, but it is what it is. It's going to take some time to readjust to my new uh, chair I just got. Not to make excuses, you guys are probably like, that's the weirdest excuse I've ever heard. Well, little things like that can definitely affect your, uh, affect your game. Now, this next opponent was actually a better opponent, 
and it's, it's kind of weird how things worked out. Because last game, Harvey, in my opinion, he dominated. He pitched really well. I mean, I gave up a home run at freaking Altuve, and I basically lost the game because of Stalker's error. If Stalker doesn't have that error, I, I at least don't lose that game. It at least goes extras. Uh, so, yeah, that was real crazy how that worked out. But I will say my next opponent hit Harvey a little bit better. Uh, he was able to hit his fastball a little bit, although Harvey's fastball it was still pretty effective. And we can see there, we almost throw it right down the middle. The previous call was a blown call um, because he threw that exact same pitch with Lincecum in the, in the top of the first, and he got the call, I think, for a third strike. Uh, yeah, so yeah, he lines out there, so we got away with that one. We're down one to nothing. I'm not too worried about it, though. Um, I'm starting to see the ball a little bit better. And actually starting to see the ball a lot better as Reggie Stalker goes yard. Uh, that, that's a card you can always count on. It's just like every other game he's going to hit home run for you. <laughs> just an amazing card. Now, talking about this game a little bit, um, I had tons of hits. I just had tons of hits, tons of base runners. So all I really needed Harvey to do was just keep me in the game. But you'll see this was another weird game. Like I either lined out a lot. I didn't line out as much as this game. There's another weird green swing. I know I'm not right on that, but come on, game. Um, as Mott Harvey does hit one deep to center here, or, or mid-center, and I'm able to tag up. So, I don't know if you guys realize, I think I had like three or four hits in Matt Harvey these, these last two games. Maybe, I think I had two, maybe three hits, and then he had that, he had a couple RBIs. He really gave me some good ABs. Was, I don't think his hitting is really good. I think I just hit the ball well with him. Um, but you can see there, he uh, jams him, breaks his bat, gets him to the ground out the chipper. And then we throw a curveball and we get him to foul it off. This is against Ted Williams. I was trying to throw anything. Again, I don't throw the curveballs too often against lefties. And that's the thing about this opponent. He had all lefties and switch hitters. I think he might have started Trout as his only true righty. And it was really difficult to pitch because I was getting very repetitive of Harvey. I was throwing pretty much fastball in, slider in, fastball in, slider in. I would every now and then, you know, go to a change up low, but he just he would hang him so often. Uh, I will say that Harvey's changeup's a little bit better than expected. Just the speed difference. I figured it'd be like a harder changeup, like 87, 88, but no, it, it can get down to 82. So I think that makes him a, a little bit better than Strasburg as far as Strasburg's changeup goes. Um, but comparing those two cards, I mean, that's that's the biggest similarity uh, I can find between two players is, is the Harvey and the Strasburg cards. They're very, very similar. The Harvey, if you guys played a couple years ago, I mean, you knew Harvey was good. He could throw hard. Um, I, I, I like his slider because it's really hard. But, and it's got a good break, but at the same time, it's hard to get some rollovers and get people out in front, righty on righty. So, I don't know. The card, I like the card. Um, I would probably say it definitely has a chance for a top 10 starting pitcher in the game. I, I probably wouldn't put him top 5, but uh, it's definitely a good card. I will say that. It's definitely a good card. I would compare it you know, pretty much on the same page as Strasburg. Strasburg having a little bit better per nines, and I think Harvey has a little bit better uh, off-speed stuff. As you can see here, we do get bases loaded, and this is a choke job. I didn't even want PCI up. You'll see I stranded bases loaded a lot, a lot this game. Um, I think I had over 20 base runners. I'm not sure how many I stranded. But we're up 2-1, to one, and again, I'm trying to get Harvey a good game here. Uh, I pitch him middle in, down and in, whatever. The fastball, the fastball is pretty much tearing this guy up. I think he only hit the one to Hamilton because I basically threw it down the middle. And then I hung a changeup. That's what I'm talking about. You hang a changeup, these guys' bat speeds are right on it. They're just, they don't miss them. So we're down three to two, and again, I don't think Harvey's pitching bad, but at this point is like, I don't, I'm not gonna lose another game I'm trying to just get a gameplay for Harvey. So I did take him out. Uh, overall, on the two games, I think he, I think he's a good pitcher. He pitched well. The problem was I gave up untimely home runs, which just killed me. As we do tie the game here with Joe Maurer, so it's three to three. But I mean, if you're a World Series caliber player or in the CS, definitely give Harvey a try. I'm like he's gonna eat up CS players. Against World Series players, he's going to hold his own. He's going to be very similar to, like, you know, Strasburg or Syndergaard on that type of level. I don't think he's as good as Verlander because Verlander is just, I don't know, Verlander throws a little bit harder. And uh, I like Verlander's changeup a little bit more. But I will say it's nice for Harvey having five pitches, having the two seam. And look, I don't know what the heck happened here. I would have scored here. Uh, we almost got thrown out at third, but we're going to get bases loaded again. Let's see if we can finally score. But definitely give your, you know, definitely give Harvey a try. It's a good card. I just, I just think that if the Pernines were a little bit better, he could probably be a top five card in the game. Um, and that being said, if Verlander had a fifth pitch, he would probably be the best card in the game, no doubt. But I don't necessarily think that he is. So, if you pretty much have like a Syndergaard or a, 
Strasburg in your rotation, I would definitely give Harvey a try. I would say he's better than pitchers like, I would say he's better than Tom Seaver. I would also say he's better than Clayton Kershaw, uh, the 99 Bumgarner, both the John Lesters. I would say he's definitely ahead of those cards. Like I said, I would probably rank him even ahead of Tim Lincecum uh, just for the mere fact that he throws, you know, 97, 98, even 99. And look at this, we do a hit and run. We're right on it, and we almost hit into another double play. We get another base hit there. As you guys can see, I'm getting tons of base hits. I just can't. I can't get a timely hit, um, and I always, in these last two games, I've pretty much gave up really untimely home runs, as Maurer rips a pretty hard hit ball in the gap, but Ichiro just runs it down. Ichiro saved my opponents a lot of runs the last two games. I think the previous opponent had Ichiro as well, and dude, that guy, that card is so freaking good, especially just defensively, uh, but we bring Chapman in against this guy. It's pretty much all left-handed lineup, and he just carves him up. Like, this guy pretty much stood no chance against uh, Chapman, Britton. Or Wagner, they all did great jobs. And there's another line out with pool holes. Like I just don't get how I can hit home run with that card. Look at this, good line drive, pretty much a center. I'm not sure why it's yellow. Maybe my timing wasn't perfect, but I mean I pulled it. I mean, I don't know how that's not. I don't know. It's a line out, is what it is. But man, that is so frustrating. And we hit another hard hit ball, trying to do a little hit and run, and somehow he gets the lead runner, and I almost hit into another double play. Just an overall frustrating experience. And then we have bases loaded. This one he got me on. That was a good pitch by him. I think that was one of my few strikeouts I had. I think I had five walks this game. I'm, I think I struck out a few times, but not much. And then I bring Britton in, and he just tears him up. Uh, my opponent cannot touch Britton at all. That sinker was just giving him fits. Um, he can barely get wood on it as he gets wood on it here. So we're going to go extra innings. And I'm on the verge, or, if, you know, at least the realm of possibility of losing two in a row, which... That's pretty crazy to think that I won like 50 in a row this, uh, pool else goes deep, so maybe not, but it's pretty crazy that, you know, I had a 45 game winning streak or whatever it was on Teep's account, and uh, it's very possible I lose this game as well, but we're trying to add some insurance runs. Shortstop makes a nice play, but isn't able to throw me out, and then Kim hits one down the line. I got a little lucky there, but hey, when you keep putting the ball in play, eventually some of those grounders will find a hole. So we have two on. I decided to leave Britton in and bunt because it's pretty much he left all of his lefties in. He makes a mistake and tries to throw to second. And I feel like, I don't know, I'll talk about that sometime later. I feel like it's too easy to get the lead runner in some of those bunts as well. Too easy to bunt though. Then we have bases loaded for Beltron. And look at this. I just hit into a freaking triple play. You have to be kidding me in my luck. Yeah, that's pretty much how I feel right now. I mean, I I mean I'm glad I got the lead at this point. But I was thinking to myself, what in the hell? Like, I don't think I've hit into a triple play all year. And I just made, I just hit into a tailor-made triple play. Like, what are the chances of that? But anyways, we still have Britton in, and he's still carving him up. So I'm feeling pretty good. We got one more strike to go. And I decided to just go ahead and go with a sinker middle in. And I don't know what he's looking at. But Britton, I think Britton honestly was the player of the game. He came in, did a fantastic job. As you can see there, my opponent struck out ten times. Uh... I had five walks and five strikeouts, so I did strike out five times. But I was putting the ball in play a lot, as you can see up top there. I had 14 hits with five walks, so 19 base runners. <sighs> Just very disappointing in the game myself. I don't know. These were two frustrating games, but uh, to wrap it up, Harvey's a good pitcher, guys. Uh, I would probably rank him like 7th or 8th, maybe 6th overall. But some of these other pitchers, you're not going to be able to afford, like the Flashback Felix or the uh, 97 Nolan Ryan. But definitely give the card a try. It's a really cool card. And yeah, I hope you guys enjoy the gameplay. This is Carnal Number 5 signing out. Peace.